Well, hello and welcome to another week on the Corner Chair. We're looking at another deck in Modern this week. And this week, it's one that is, well, it's a personal favourite of mine. And that is, um, we are playing some Modern Green Black Elves. And the reason this deck, in particular, is one of my personal favourites is that it was my first ever competitive deck that I built in paper. So, let's have a look at what we're going to be doing with some Elves this week. So, to start off with, we've got our one-drop mana Elves. So, we have some Llanowar Elves, Elvish Mystic, and Elves of the Deep Shadow. Just one copy of that, just to be able to add black. Um, and on top of that, we have a package of Heritage Druid and Nettle Sentinel. Now, Heritage Druid allows us to tap three untapped Elves for three green mana. And Nettle Sentinel, whenever we cast a green spell, you may untap it. So when you combine the two together, you end up with well, this great mana loop where you tap Nettle Sentinel for mana, you cast a spell, it untaps, you can tap it again for mana, and you just can go off with it. Um, also working well with Heritage Druid is Dwinnin's Elite, uh, because a Heritage Druid and a Dwinnin's Elite is three elves, so you can tap them for mana again. Uh, it also just puts two bodies on the battlefield, is a decent enough card. Uh, on top of that, we have our Lords. Uh, Elvish Archdruid is a Lord who produces mana, about everything you could want, produces a lot of mana. Um, we have Elvish Clan Caller, who is a Lord who can search up more Lords, very useful. Uh, we also have Azuri, who is a Pseudo Lord, in that he can pump our Elves, give them Trample, so that we can get through uh, damage. Works really well with Archdruid. We can also use him to regenerate other Elves, which does come in handy. And Shaman of the Pack is our other way of closing out the game, which, when it enters the battlefield, just deals damage, or target opponent loses life, equal to the number of elves we control, uh, which can be anywhere from 3 or 4 to 10 to 15 elves, depending on the board state, so yeah, sometimes a shaman or two is just enough to get the game done. That's why we have the black elves of deep shadow in there. Um, we also have a beast whisperer, just to help us draw through our deck uh, with heritage druid and um, nettle sentinel. It just goes off. We can just get through our deck at lightning speed and just basically play out our whole deck, which means we can get some shamans down. And yeah, it, it's very good, but only a one of. Um, and Elvish Visionary, just a couple of to draw some uh, cards in the deck. Just keep finding our other more important pieces. Um, and then we have uh, some collected companies, which is just a really good instant. We get two elves for the price of one card. Very useful. And Court of Calling, again, instant speed. We can search out. Um, an elf to be able to bring onto the battlefield often we'll try and find Beast Whisper or something else that will help us churn through our deck but yeah um, on top of that we just run one Assassin's Trophy main board as a removal spell kind of catch-all to have uh, ready to go in case uh, yeah we're gonna die it's just nice to know we have something in the deck to be digging for all right that's the deck onto sideboard and in our sideboards, we have Veil of Summer, which is hate against both discard and uh, counters. So blue, black, it's just really solid green sideboard cards. Um, yeah, it's good. Uh, Pithing Needle, just a catch-all against activated abilities. Bring it in a, in a range of decks. Uh, Damping Sphere, Combo and Tron hate. So just slowing down Tron and slowing down combos. It does stop us from just... Uh, balling out of control with our elves, but that's all right. We can get around it um, Another assassin's trophy is a catch-all uh, Two heroic interventions as wrath protection because if someone can wrath our board we just lose basically um, Scavenging ooze as graveyard hate on a creature Reclamation sage as artifact and enchantment hate in an elf and a choke in case we come across a, an islands game and we can just win with a choke anyway that's the deck. Let's see how we go. I hope you enjoy the games and I'll see you in a bit. All right, so we're gonna be playing some Green Black Elves. I'm gonna try a different thing with the voiceover narration for this uh, video, uh, mainly because my audio stuffed up, but you know, we can try it. So it looks like we're up against the Is It Blitz deck with a Monastery Swift Spear on one. We play a Nettle Sentinel on one, just hoping to establish a board. We have some Lords in hand, so this could be quite a big Sentinel, big enough to block. But they... Yeah, so they play a Mutagenic Growth on the Swift Spear to buff it insanely, and a Stormwing Entity, which is problematic. Anyway, we play a Lord and set some Auto Yield Triggers, because that's useful, and get in for three. If they want to make that trade, I'd be more than happy to trade my one drop for their five drop. Okay, so they opt, triggering some prowess and another Swiss Spear and hit us for seven down to eight. Not looking good. 
So we play an Elvish Archdruid here to untap the Nettle Sentinel. And I considered swinging in with both, but then I did the maths and went, no, we need to leave something back to block a Swiss Spear. So we left a Nettle Sentinel back to block a Swiss Spear. And then past their turn, they opt and just swing in with the Stormwing, uh, taking us down to three. So they win next turn. Uh, and looking at this hand, I don't think we can beat them this turn. I'm going to try to... So I'm playing a couple of Elves because they're basically free with the Arch Druid out. So let's swing in for both, see what they do. You gotta block the Sentinel. What they should do here is block both, but they only blo double block the Elvish Clan Caller. And we do in fact get a Dwinnin's Elite and another Elvish Clan Caller, which means that we get to Court of Calling here, X3, and go and get a Shaman of the Pack, which is lethal, I believe. So a bit of a misplay from our opponent there, but yeah, we'll take it. We'll take the lethal hit and go on to sideboarding. Yeah, they really should have blocked both our Nettle Sentinel and the Elvish Clan Caller there, but that's all right. So in sideboarding, we want the Damping Spheres to handle multiple spells. Assassin's Trophy is a catch-all, and we're just taking out a bunch of random dorks in the process and hope that that will be enough. So this hand doesn't do much of anything, but it has a Damping Sphere, so hopefully it can slow our opponent down enough that we can actually play things. So we're going to start with the Heritage Druid. It offers us the most upside if we happen to draw something, unless of course they gut shot it. And Stormwing Entity on two. It's a very strong play, that Stormwing on two, being able to gut shot or some other free spell to get it. Anyway, we Damping Sphere to slow them down. There's no point playing a Dwinnin's Elite with no other elf on the board. They swing in for four. They have quite a clock here, even without having to cast many spells. So we're just going to play a Shaman of the Pack here, literally as a blocker. Um, but they Lava Dart our Shaman of the Pack, giving a negative one counter because of Soul Scar Mage. And then it looks like they're going to Lava Dart again to get rid of it, and Lightning Bolt our face, and that is lethal. So very quick from our opponent, even through the Damping Sphere. So we'll go back to sideboarding. I was considering for a bit bringing in Heroic Intervention, but I just wasn't sure what to cut and whether it'd be worth it, so we just ran the same list back and hoped for the best. Uh, this hand does almost enough. If there was a second land there, we would have kept. This hand is decent, decent elf curve, so we'll start with Elvish Mystic and hope that they don't bolt the Elvish Mystic. They bolt the Elvish Mystic. Uh, we have no turn to play, but we do have an Assassin's Trophy, so we'll probably just Assassin's Trophy, the Soul Scar Mage. Don't know whether I should have saved that for a bigger threat, but it was worth getting things down on the board. We play an Arch Druid and it gets killed. So our decent starting hand is now looking pretty, pretty bad here. Um, fortunately, our opponent isn't playing much. Um, they did get a gut shot off their light up the stage last turn, so there's absolutely no point playing the Lanawa Elf or the Dwinnin's Elite straight into a gut shot, so we'll just wait another turn. They get a Soul Scar Mage and don't hit us, so we're going to draw a card off the Peatland and play our hand. And this is what Elves can do. Generally, you're aiming to do this sort of thing by turn two, and on turn five, it's a little bit slow, but we managed to dump our hand really, really quickly there. Um, from no board state to five creatures is pretty decent. But our opponent here is just going off, casting spell after spell, metamorphose, light up the stage, and it gives them two burn spells so they can flame slash our nettle sentinel and get him for a lot of damage, six damage there. And then on our turn, they lava dart our heritage druid, which I thought was a bit of weird timing. They could have done that last turn and actually gotten in an extra point of damage if they were always going to kill it. So. Um, yeah, a bit of weird timing. We just swing in, play a Dwinnin's Elite, and it looks like they're going off again with Manamorphose into Opt, into Lightning Bolt, killing our Dwinnin's Elite that's untapped and hitting us for four, and playing a Stormwing, so that's problematic because we can't block the Storm Stormwing. We can block the Swift Spear, chump it for days. We draw another land, which is one of the issues with this deck. If we draw lands, then we're just stuffed. So, yeah. It looks like we're not going to be able to get this one. Uh, if our, we don't block anything, uh, maybe we should have blocked the Swift Spear just in case, but eh. They have two Storm Wings out, and there's no way we can win from here. We play, play a Nettle Sentinel and scoop up the game. All right, second game. We 
have a decent-ish enough curve. We've got a uh, one-drop elf into a lord in slash tapping for a lot of mana into Beast Whisperer, hopefully into more action. So, yeah, decent curve. We're playing Tron, and they're going to get turn 3 tr Tron, because, you know, you always get turn 3 Tron. Uh, anyway, we dump our hand, minus the two peatlands, and we draw another land. Um, so, turn 3 Tron gets to play a Worm Coil Engine. That's not the end of the world for us. We draw another land, and then an Azuri is actually a decent draw here. So, we get to play Azuri, we get to keep going off and had we left up black mana here instead of tapping it uh, we would probably be able to keep playing the shaman and keep going off however we don't and our opponent plays an Ugin and we cannot beat an Ugin it's just a hard answer to our deck there's nothing we can do against an Ugin so we bring in some Tron hate in Damping Sphere, Assassin's Trophy and the Pithing Needle um, Pithing Needle particularly for Ugin it's just bad for us we take out a shaman um, an Elvish Mystic, the two Visionaries, and tossing up over the last card to take out. Eventually, I decide on a Dwinnin's Elite. So, yeah, hopefully, our anti Tron stuff will come through. Remember, Assassin's Trophy can uh, assassinate a Tron land. Very useful to have in the back of your mind. Alright, so we play first. We have an Assassin's Trophy for a Tron land, and we have fairly fast elves. So, yeah, this isn't a bad keep. Uh, we'll play the Lanoa Elves on one, and our opponent plays a Tron Land and a Sphere. We'll play the Heritage Druid on two, and not attack to leave up Assassin's Trophy, in case it looks like our opponent's going to get turn three Tron. So, our opponent's definitely building towards Tron, so we're just going to take out that tower now, rather it be a, a forest than anything else. Uh, we draw a forest of our own, and we're just wondering whether we attack or not, and the answer is yes, we attack, and we don't really get anything out of it. We just get two one drops from the court of court, uh, collected company that we cast. Our opponent does Sylvan Scrying and managed to find another Tron land and expedition map for the third Tron land. Anyway, it looks like here what we're planning to do is court of calling to get up a an arch druid so that we can pump the team and go insane next turn. Um, our opponent gets their Tron and plays a walking ballista, which is really good here. Um, against us so so we're gonna court of calling end of term to uh, get the arch druid and I'm not sure whether we should have waited on the court of calling just to try and optimize when walking ballista can target things but we get our arch druid and they ping it down to death so don't have much going on now uh, we play a clan caller and we swing with three creatures so that we can tap the other three for mana and pump the team getting in for 16 damage so that was a pretty good turn however our opponent has Ugin again which we just can't beat it will wipe our board will be and wipe anything that we play so we scoop the match all right game number three so we have a pretty decent elf curve here we got a couple of arch druids and uh, nettle sentinel um, and the Lanoa elf to get into the arch druids quickly but it doesn't look like we'll be quick enough because our opponent is playing Dredge and they get back a Blood Ghast on turn two and they have a Dredger in the graveyard in Golgari Thug already and they just loan back a couple of lands. I was scared of a Cathartic Reunion there. Anyway, we play our nice fair start of an Elvish Archdruid. Uh, they mill some more cards. Nothing really relevant in the graveyard so far. There is a, a life from the loam. Uh, they can flag a conflagrate for zero and then conflagrate in the graveyard to uh, wipe our board but we just we're going to play another elvish arch druid here um they got back a silver smote ghoul because of the creeping chill which then gets back a prized amalgam it's good little yeah good good hand there wasn't much we could do there so we scoop it up we were just too slow Alright, so we're going to bring in our Graveyard Hate of Scavenging Ooze over Assassin's Trophy and an Elvish uh, Visionary. Now, I used to run Ley Lines in the sideboard for this sort of matchup, but I just found there weren't many matchups it was good in. So this hand is decent, particularly if we can draw a land, but it's still decent without a land, so we're going to play a Mystic on one. See what our opponent does. Our opponent does nothing. We don't draw a land, so we're just going to dump as much of our hand as possible in the Nettle Sentinel and Heritage Druid. And they haggle. 
only discarding a land. So no dredger in the graveyard yet is good. A fetch with wooded foothills, getting a mountain and casting cathartic reunion. And yeah, they don't have any dredger in the graveyard still, so that's good for us. We are going to try and dump as much of our hand here as possible, so we get the clan caller down. And we play a shaman and get in for three. So next turn we definitely have lethal unless they can stop it, so they're gonna do some cathartic reunion dredging, a whole lot of dredging, but I don't know whether any of this is relevant because we can just swing through here, so um, yeah, they get a couple of pri prized amalgams back, but yeah, um, we're just gonna play a shaman of the pack, which is lethal damage on board, and go to game three. All right, so we don't change anything for sideboarding for game three, and we look at our hand and go, you know what? I've seen worse hands, and I've also seen better hands, but, you know, maybe we should be mulliganing a bit more aggressively for some graveyard hate. And they get a triple creeping chill on their first dredge. Not much else relevant dredged, like, uh, discarded, but a creeping chill. And now dredge is looking really powerful, so they have an ox in graveyard, they've got a couple of dredges in hand, so they're just going to be able to to really go off next turn. Um, yeah, it's gonna be pretty hard to come back from here. So we're just gonna play a very fair game of playing a Dwinin's Elite after playing a Nettle Sentinel and passing the turn. Our opponent here, opponent conflagrates our board, discarding their hand basically to get rid of everything on our board. It seems pretty fair. They now have two dredges in graveyard and next turn can just really go off with the ox in graveyard. Uh, we dump what we can in our hand and hope for the best, but they cast an ox, getting back a prized amalgam at the end of turn, and they will just dredge like there's no tomorrow here, so yeah, lots and lots of dredging, getting back, getting a Nark Amoeba and they'll get back a prized amalgam, Chicken, chipping in for one, or is it two prized amalgams, ah, that's even worse. Alright, so we draw a Shaman of the Pack, which will be good when we can cast it. So we're just going to leave up some regeneration of Elves so that we can block and keep our Elves alive. So our opponent swings in for a lot. We're just going to block, block, and regenerate both of our Elves here. And hope that that's good enough that we can win next turn. And our opponent has a second Ox in Graveyard. So again, they get to just dredge an insane amount here. Um, they get their last Creeping Chill, which means all of their Silver Smoke Ghouls come back from the graveyard. Which is a lot of damage. And a prized Amalgam comes back. We draw a land, and we go to combat here, and there's really not much we can do. We can swing in for um, a bit of damage and pump everything to do a, a chunk of damage to our opponent, but we can't actually win here because we can't cast our shaman in hand, so we lose to a massive dredge board. On to the next one. Well, we have a decent curve in this one. We've got Mystic into Archdruid, always good, and drawing the Assassin's Trophy is also useful. Our opponent is on Slivers, which is awesome. Nice to see a different deck happening. So Slivers is, yeah. Slivers is an interesting deck. I really do enjoy Slivers. So they've got an Aether Vial down and a Sliver Hive and an Unclaimed Territory. And they play the Flying Haste Sliver. Now that thing means that we, they can kill us very, very quickly. So we are going to leave up Assassin's Trophy here rather than dump all of our... Well, I guess we do dump most of our hand, basically. Um, but yeah, we're just going to leave up Assassin's Trophy here to be able to kill the, um, the Hasty Flying Sliver. They play Diffusion Sliver, which means we have to kill the uh, the Cloud Shredder Sliver right now. They drop in a Lord, and they play another Lord. So, lots of Lords, a couple of Aether Vials, but not much going on for our opponent here. So, we're just going to swing in with those three, and I think we're just planning to get a um, another Clan Caller here. Clan Caller, finding Clan Caller is really nice. And then we can sack the Peatland at the end of their turn to get another card in hand. So, opponent draws a card with Horizon Canopy and realizes they're no match for the elves and scoops it up. So, we'll go to sideboarding. 
All right, I think we're just bringing in the Assassin's Trophy over a Her Elvish Visionary, and the reason being just a removal spell, but I think we can actually keep up with the Sliver deck pretty easily. Um, so I'm not that worried about Aether Vial. Um, could have brought in a Pithing Needle or a Reclamation Sage to handle it, but I'm not that worried. Anyway, our opponent is off to a reasonable uh, Sliver start, playing a Mana Weft Sliver, which means they'll get all the mana. However, we are elves and we just get more mana. And I lucked out a bit there to get the one drop off the visionary, but that's what I was aiming for. There are a lot of one drops in the deck. Anyway, our opponent has a lot of mana here, for, particularly for slivers. Uh, but they just play a lord, and another lord, and a first striking sliver. So now their slivers have first strike as well. Um, so I think they're just going to leave them back to block here. Alright, we draw a Shaman of the Pack. So we're going to play an Elvish Clan Caller here. And I'm wanting to leave up Assassin's Trophy. So I can't play Shaman of the Pack here. I'm just wondering how much I can cord for. And the answer is 3. So I will 100% just cord of calling here to get probably an Arch Druid. Yeah, just to make my creatures a little bigger. No, I decide for a Shaman of the Pack, because this does open us up to just winning next turn. Our opponent does have a pretty impressive board going on here, so it's going to be hard to beat. So they activate Mutavolt, which is a Sliver, and they play a Leeching Sliver, which uh, drains us for one whenever they attack. Now, um, I'm sitting here doing some maths, working out that if I kill any one of them, will that mean that I can win? So I'm just working out exactly which one to kill. And the answer is a Lord here. So I go over the maths a couple of times, work it out, and I let them attack so they get all their triggers just to make sure they didn't have any, I don't know what spell, but I guess um, they could tap them for mana. So make sure they didn't have a spell in hand and were tapped out. Kill a Lord and then, yeah, proceed to, I believe, go to one, which means that we win on the backswing. So yeah, um, we can just win here by swinging in and doing a lot of damage. And we had the Shaman in hand if we wanted to, but we didn't need it in the end, we just needed to swing in. Alright, next match. Our opponent plays a Gemstone Caverns, revealing an El... well, exiling an Eternal Scourge, so Eldrazi, not good. And our opponent plays Chalice of the Void on one, so they get in under our big turn of being able to Heritage Druid, Nettle Sentinel, Nettle Sentinel, and then just go off. So we had the cards to go off there, um, but yeah, they just shut us down, and I thought Not Seer means they'll take the best card in our hand, which is the Clan Caller, and we can't really do anything, so we'll go to the next one. So I've decided to bring in a couple of Reclamation Sages and Assassin's Trophy to handle the Chalice, because we really struggle to beat Chalice on one, and I'm going down three one drops quite um, intentionally, just so that we have less one drops. Uh, we mulligan the first hand and keep a decent enough hand. Um, this hand is, yeah, if we can avoid a chalice on one, we can drop our hand very, very quickly. Uh, our opponent dismembers our first play and plays a mimic, so no chalice on one to start with. Uh, we'll just get as many creatures out as possible. And our opponent thought not sears. And I almost just scooped to the Thought Knots here, because this is a lot of damage very quickly, and they're going to take our Collected Company, so we can't refuel. Um, but I stick it out, I play an Elvish Visionary, Nettle Sentinel, and yeah, like, I managed to dump my hand here, but our opponent's threats are just bigger. And uh, with another Eldrazi Temple, they're at Reality Smasher mana. Uh, they don't have a Reality Smasher, fortunately, um, but they just get in for a bunch with... Um, yeah, the Eldrazi Mimic and Thought Not Seer. Um, well, we do draw an Arch Druid here, which is nice. Means that we can actually pose a bit of a threat, at least if they overcommit. Or they just draw a Reality Smasher and win the game. So there's no way of us winning from here with this many big threats and us having a chump block. Anyway, that's all the videos. Let's wrap it up. So, that was Green Black Elves, and we <laughs> didn't do great overall. Um... Yeah, a bit disappointed in that, as this is one of my personal favourite decks to play. Um, 
So we came across the Blitz deck to start with, and we lost to that because they have just so much incidental burn, so it might be worth putting something in that's uh, in the sideboard that just hates on some of that targeted removal. Uh, this would also work well against the burn matchup. Just having some answer to targeted removal would be very useful. Next up we face Tron, and usually I quite like facing Tron. We win a lot against Tron, we're just quick enough that we get under the 3 mana play, and then there's only a couple of plays that are actually relevant of their big ones. Unfortunately, our Tron opponent drew Ugin both games, and Ugin is just a hard answer to everything we're doing. We can't beat an Ugin. Everything we're playing is CMC 3 or less, basically. So Ugin just beats us, being able to do the negative X as many times as they need to, basically, and then we start playing things, and they can just plus it to kill whatever we play. Yeah, Ugin, impossible to beat. Uh, Dredge, I kind of felt like it was a hard matchup. I used to run some Leyline of the Voids in the deck, um, but they're only really good in the current meta against Dredge. There's not really much else that's abusing the Graveyard at the moment. So I decided to opt for less Graveyard Hate and put in Scavenging Ooze instead to have something on a creature, and it just felt like it was really weak Graveyard Hate. Maybe I need more in the sideboard to fight through Graveyards harder, but yeah, that, that's alright. Uh, then we... Um, face slivers and we beat Slither slivers it was fun um had to do some fun maths to try and get through that but we got there uh and then finally we faced eldrazi and yeah they just produce some really big threats and unless we have the absolute nuts we can't really keep up with them uh and chalice on one really does wreck our deck we have the reclamation sage in the sideboard and a couple of assassins trophies to deal with chalice on one but it just, it slows us down so much if they can get it on turn one, which they managed to do, so, um, yeah. Anyway, that was the deck. Uh, it was a lot of fun to play. Uh, I wish we did a little better with it, but that's alright. Uh, what can you do? Um, yeah, so tune in next week, we'll play something a bit different. I hope you enjoyed the gameplay, and I'll catch you later. If you like this video, please click like and subscribe. It really helps us know what content you guys want. You can follow us on Facebook or Twitter at The Corner Chair, and thanks for watching!